Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey and Darren Peter. Hello, folks. My name is John Fahey. Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity. I am joined by my gorgeous co-host, Aaron Pita. Oh. You're so sweet. I know. (laughs) He's sweet, also gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. I was waiting. We are a show about weirdos. We talk about eccentric persons from history. Today, I want to talk about a phone hacker, a freaker. PH. PH freaker. Mm. A gentleman who went to prison at the age of 19, Oof. Matthew Weigman, uh-huh. he's from East Boston, Oof. and he grows up in a shitty little apartment, and he's got an abusive drunk father who's abusive to him. The boy is blind. Oh, so he can't even see it coming. He's born blind. He's born blind. His dad is like dragging him around the floor, calling him a blind bastard, oh. beating the hell out of him. And... Um, Give us a time period here. What, you know, what, well, we're talking about uh, we're talking about nineties, early nineties. Yeah, this is this is a young this this guy right now is twenty six. Right now, right now, today. Yes. What? Yes. Let me tell you the whole fucking story. <laughs> Are you ready for this, people? Yes. Get ready. So this guy, at the age of about eight years old, becomes interested in the phone. Right. And he's at he's in school. He's getting bullied for being blind, you know, and he's got to tap around with the cane going through school. The kids are beating on him. His dad's beating on him. He just gets interested in the phone. He starts realizing that he can do stuff from memory, imitations of people's voices. Right. right. Okay. He's got perfect pitch. Yes. He knows how to get the tones of things. And he's he's got this ability. And around the around the age of. 11 he's introduced to party lines party lines were like pre-internet chat rooms right right on the phone on the phone you all dialed into a common yes. number and all you know hey what's up Steve? right so it, it was like you would go into the and they they would they would be populated by weird characters because i this is something i didn't know i'm older than this guy i never heard of party lines i didn't know this was even a culture yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and so but it would be a lot of you could say colorful characters it'd be like ex-cons and just people that were like unemployed, blind kids getting the shit beat out of them by their dad. Right. I mean, and then the, like there would be women too, you know. Also colorful. And they would be into, but they would be people that were kind of into hanging out in a weird sleazy chat room. You know what I mean? Yeah. The '90s were a very weird time, people. Right. Before the internet, you had to get your kicks where you could. Sometimes you just dial an 800, 900 number and talk to strangers. So this kid went from from childhood. He would ask technicians about stuff about the phone. He basically started doing these party lines. He, the first time he went in one, it's more, it's a more visceral experience than an internet chat room because everybody, it's the live human voice. Right. And some people are just talking intermittently between playing video games. Mm. Some people are highly involved. But he fell in love with it because he goes, you know what? We're all blind in here right now. Yeah. You know? And so he didn't, he wasn't like a troublemaker. He wasn't a freaker. He wasn't, he was just a, a kid. He was a child, you know? But one time when he was 14 years old... He had now he had now realized that certain pitches, you know, would change lines and stuff like that. And he he understood the clicks that were happening because he had this very heightened, right, a very daredevil esque sense of daredevil-esque. sound. Yes. So he learned how to do stuff like one time he accidentally hit the pound and the star key at once, and he realized it opened up a moderator thing, mm. and it gave it was giving him everybody in the group chats phone numbers. So he discovered that on accident. Because he would hear the tones or because... That was just a pure accident. Right. But a lot of other stuff was like, he became this genius phone hacker because he could imitate voices. Like, eerily accurate. You know? So then he started doing stuff where he was like messing with the phone company. So this is what... What year is this happening now? If he's 11, this is like the year 2000? Well, let's see here. He's going to be released in 2018. (laughs) This kid. Oh, shit. He's sentenced to 11 years. Wow. Okay, for phone hacking. Wow. I'm going to let you know about the culture. Right. So there's a, there's a person that is kind of bullying people in the group chat. and Even he, ner- even within, even within nerds have bullies in their own group. Yeah, but he would, he would kind of know how to 
do these fucked up phone hacks. And the main thing is about manipulating caller ID, seeing where a phone call is coming from. Mm -hmm. So at one point, like phone sex is a huge part of this whole scene. So when 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 Matthew Weigman is fourteen, this one girl refuses to have phone sex with him. Oh, she doesn't give phone consent. She does it. So her father is a TSA agent, right? So it's post nine eleven. It's, it's right. And her father's a TSA. Like you know, he's basically like he's. He's acting like there's a hostage situation inside this girl's father's house because she won't have phone sex with him. Jesus so it looks like Christ. it looks like the the call is coming from his house, and this guy, this guy, I mean, people are breaking down his windows, like exploding in his windows because of this fake hostage crisis. Because this, and this, this is a woman. This is not a girl. You know what I mean? But she's one of these people that would frequent these places. And he just, you know, he could get in. He could find he could find out your phone numbers. He could find out the people you talk to's phone numbers. Like, I mean, he got so deep into knowing how to manipulate the phone company. And a lot of it was from calling up the phone company and imitating a person. Right. And knowing the language of, a, we need a deorder on right, this. Right. And then they would just give up all the information because you sound exactly... Like their boss. Like and the you're boss. using the right language. I mean, when you brought up... When you told me the subject was going to be... Phone hacking. Yes. I'm thinking 80s. Oh, like no. Steve, like Steve Wozniak. The thing hacking. is, some of these party lines are still going. Some people still do this exactly. shit. And this is mind-blowing because yeah. this guy's doing this in the age of the internet. There's plenty of other places this guy can go, but since he's blind, he can't be typing on a keyboard looking at a screen. He's got to go and check out these party lines where a bunch of losers all over the country are calling these numbers. Matthew Weigman thinks he might have done this SWAT maneuver. SWAT? Swatting. It's called swatting, where the SWAT team comes and busts in your door because he's making it sound like there's a hostage situation inside. Oh, my God. 60 times. What? 60 times. Just girls who wouldn't... No, phone? no, no, no. Because the thing is, is that then he, like, once he becomes... Once he becomes better and better at it, now he's in the phone group as a bully. He's the bully now because he's been abused. <sighs> well, isn't that the tale? Isn't that that, that the is. Tale so, but, like, if you fuck with them... He's going to get right in there, know your, like, find out your phone number, you know, and he, he knows the numbers, like, you know how each number is a different tone? Yeah, of course. He could lock in the memory of that immediately, and he could recite it back to you. Right. And this is all stored in the dome, Aaron. This is all in the head. Well, he's, he's, he's blind. He's not reading comic right, books. Right, but I mean, like, the, like he, it's astonishing. So he's yeah. becoming, as he grows older, more and more powerful. Ooh, like, like a comic book villain. Yeah. This I is mean, very, very comic book villain. I mean... This is he what could, these... he, could, he could do piano by ear. Wow. He could do t TV imitations of cartoon characters immediately. Wow. To play anything on the piano by ear immediately. What if this guy was born in a time before the phone? Like, what would he have been a master of the harpsichord or the piano, right? Like, right. it's interesting to think about what that. What would have been his outlet if there was no touchtone phone when this guy was born? But a lot of these guys back in the day, these original phone freakers, like pre-Wozniak Captain Crunch guys, there were other blind dudes with this same superpower. Right. Who had perfect pitch and could whistle into the phone, manipulate the phone yes. system, and get these party lines, and they would do the same thing. Like, he is doing what the greats did before him, but he did it in a time... Right. So 20 years later. So there's, so crazy. there's starting to be like cronyism going on in the party lines. Well, after he, he's, he's starting to get into some phone hacking stuff because now you're in a group chat with a bunch of people and you also have this ability to bully. And then they like they have like a little bit of a crew and they call it they call them the wrecking crew. Oh, my God. And one of these guys was a, like a real jerk named Rossoff. Right. <laughs> and Rossoff was kind of became a mentor to Matt and Matt. <laughs> Matt, like, called uh, the cops on a, a girl in the chat after he demanded phone sex, or and then... Uh, so his his bag was, hey, let's have phone sex. No? All right, SWAT's kicking down your door and yeah, shooting your Yeah, but he got dog. it from guys like Rossoff, who was, like, an old like an older guy, like a guy in his 30s, right? He learned it from this... He was okay. kind of mentored by, by these guys. And this guy, Rossoff, is such a jerk-off that he sends the cops to this girl's house, and after they trash the house, he tells this girl she has kids. She's a woman, you know what I mean? He goes, uh, yeah. He's like, now are you going to have phone sex with me? And he goes, and if, if you're not, I'd gladly have phone sex with your daughter. Oh, my God. Yeah. Horrifying. So, Weigman, Matthew Weigman is becoming more and more on Rossoff's level. And then it gets to a point where they're kind of of even ability. And they would threaten, because you could shut off somebody's phone line. 
You could by just whistling into the handset. No, no, this is this is all from basically learning how to con the people at the phone company because they're getting they the information. The language. Uh, yeah, and they would be getting credit card numbers. Oh my god! Because you can, if you're a supervisor at say Verizon, you can dial in to the to to the you you can listen to all the customer service people, and the customer service people are talking to customers, paying their bills, and they're giving over their fucking credit card or. Entering it touchstone, and he knows got, all the numbers. Oh my god! So he can memorize, and then he's ta- he's taking all that money, all these credit card numbers, giving them to his friends, and they're buying electronics and computer equipment. So he's having all this phone sex. You know, he's like a, a pirate. You know, taking all this shit. He's manipulating the phone company. He's got SWAT teams busting in people's fucking windows. Oh my god! <laughs> One of these guys. One of these guys he swatted was like an old trucker, like a, a gray haired old man. He just had open heart surgery and and he, he, he opens the door. There's guns in his face and he gets thrown on the fucking ground because fucking Matthew told him this. <laughs> Matthew said Matthew, Matthew called 911 supposedly from this guy's phone line, you know. Like conning the caller ID. Right, right, right. And he's like, I'm tripping on drugs. I got hostages. Oh my he's god. He's like, I need fifty grand to go to Mexico. Also, I killed my wife. Oh and my like, god. He just says all this litany of the most insane shit, and then he's this guy who just had fucking heart surgery is getting his ass kicked by the fucking SWAT team. Oh my god. Yeah, it's fucking way, way. This guy's way out like of lawnmower man. Yes. So when it comes to Rossoff now, Rossoff and him are like they're fucked because they're bored. Matthew. He, he's dropping out of school. He's on the phone all day now. He's in nothing but party lines because this is a world where he is a god. Right. He's right. become a god. Yeah. Like he's they like the FBI said this is one of the best phone hackers that ever existed. They were astonished. And he's by eighteen. This. 15. No, he started astonishing them when he was like 14. Jesus. Yeah, they didn't know how he knew how to do stuff. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna stick with this Rossoff story. So Rossoff okay is a bully. He mentors Matt. Matt's kind of a bully too, a minor bully, but then they start matching each other and then there's this tension because now they're kind of rivals, equals, right, right? and then Matt just starts surpassing him. And it comes to the point where Matt is like resentful that this Rossoff guy ever bullied him. And and Rossoff is- The guy Matt. who taught, like his yeah. own mentor. So Rossoff is just like pleading with him. Like, please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Because he's fucking with him. Because he's fucking with him in a way that he cannot circumvent. This is very Sith. Yes, yes. Like. Yeah, so like he's he's getting older and like he's just, he's getting angrier and angrier. And the testosterone is like yeah, he's, entering his system he's now. Like, he's, yeah, turning, he's turning 15, kid. 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Oh my God. So he starts attacking the fellow freakers. Of course. You know, because that's what happens. Because it's like, I want a powerful opponent. You know what I mean? I want someone worthy. Yeah. This is also, remember that movie, um, fuck, where they all had superpowers and shit, and the, the kid was getting beat by his dad. Oh, oh, um, fucking, what the fuck? Chronicle. Yes, yes, yes. This is that guy. Right. And he's blind and on a phone and not flying around town. So, one day he, he starts putting all of his hatred on this guy named Daniels. Just some other dude. He's another guy in the, in the, in, but uh, Daniels was a guy that went to jail for three years for phone hacking. And he's a man. And he's he's a man. And right. and he's he's still involved in this weird phone community, but he's kind of like straightening out. Right. Oh, and, I don't do that and, anymore. And even though Matthew is bullying him, he's he he's like, I can tell this kid he's still a kid. Right. So <laughs> so all this hate gets unloaded on Daniels and Daniels said he used to call my landlord and tell tell my landlord I was a child molester and I killed people. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he's like, but as who? As who himself? Like, he would imitate the voice of somebody. He would act like he was calling from the police department. Right. That's right. the thing. Oh, you've he, got a you got a child molester. Yeah, he'd act like he was calling from the cops. Like he could do anything. He could dial into anything. Like this kid said, he's like, I could have shut down the phone company in, in entire areas. I was that good at it. Oh my god. So Daniel's his way of coming back is he does what they call like uh, the information thing. And that's, he goes and he hacks into Matthew Weigman's shit and gets his social security number. And then he gains Matthew's respect and they become friends. Wow. So Matthew is like, kind of now got this new mentor, but it's not even a mentor because he's, he's a superior hacker, but he has a friend and he starts, he like, he has like a, like a girlfriend. You know, Matthew, like a, Matthew? Matthew gets a girlfriend. Like a real life girlfriend or a phone girlfriend? I think it was a phone girlfriend. Yeah, probably. But it was like. 
instead of swatting her, if there was a fight, he would go and talk to Daniels about it. So it was like, oh, hey, my girlfriend. He was kind of like, you know, rage right was subsiding, you know what I mean? And like, he would start, because he would start like taking on this mannish, like, you know, tough guy tone. And then once he became friends with Daniels and he realized like he had a confidence, he started acting like, you know, a boy again. You know what I mean? He be started acting like Instead a Instead of like an evil maniac, he started reverting back to what he was, which was a Yeah, a he's, I mean, like, boy. he still had a lot of, so, so Daniels is just telling him like, look, man, I've, be I've been down this road. You're going, you're going to get caught. Yeah. It's not going to go anywhere good. Yeah. You know, like, but he, he basically, he made Matthew a moderator of one of these party lines in an effort to be like, here, you know, Here's your domain. use your thing in a good way. Right. You know, we're all in this community. I know, I know you need this community. But the FBI has been investigating him since like one of those first swats. And they eventually catch up with him and they go to his door and they talk to him. And this FBI agent takes a call. And while he's in while he's in Matthew's apartment, oh my! And God. Matthew turns around after because he, he goes, I can't talk right now. I'll call you back. And and Matthew turns around and goes, Oh, was that Billy from Verizon? And he was like, How the fuck do you know that? And it was just from the hearing the fucking speaker on the phone. Like it wasn't loud. It would have right. been inaudible to anybody. Right. Right. But he's got that heightened hearing. Right. Oh my God! That he knew right away. Oof. So this FBI agent says to him, I want you to become an informant. I want you to start working for us. And take down the rest of the, these these phone hackers, because Matthew kind of folds pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, he's a little blind kid who dad beat the shit out well, of him. Also, it's the thing he's most proud of. You know, right, what you I mean? don't want to take away the only thing that he's got. Yeah, and so he's he's here. He's, you can still fuck and around. He's just with your in a toys. fucking apartment. He lives in a box with his mother and his siblings. The alcohol father's gone. Do you they know? not? I mean, he's on the phone all day. They let him. They let him. They let him drop out of school. They were just happy that he was happy. Oh, yeah. That's so weird. But also, he he's the, the fuck. There's no phone bill because he's hacking the fucking. Oh yeah, the, the Matthews hanging out on the phone all day. We get yeah. Well, some lady in Texas is paying his phone bill in his Boston apartment because he's hacked her shit. Of course. So uh, one of the Verizon guys sees this and he goes, "Well, that's fraudulent," and he shuts it the fuck down. And then he goes and finds out who shut this down. Billy. I mean, it, it was Billy. It, it was, was Billy. Billy from Verizon. It was Billy from Verizon. And so then he starts attacking Billy, harassing Billy, calling Billy, harassing Billy. And so he's like, all right, well, you know, fuck that. But then he's got, he hacks into Verizon. He's getting, he's getting information in real time, billing in real time by impersonating supervisor, finding out who's he calling now? Who's he calling now? So he would find out the most recent call, call back from that number so that Billy would pick up the phone so he could keep harassing him. Jesus. Because he knows that there's now an investigation going on about right. it. Right. And now it's gone to the U.S. attorney, you know? Yeah. And so it's like... Yeah, this is federal stuff. It's, it's across it's, state it lines. Is, it yeah. is federal, exactly. Yeah. He's, he keeps attacking this Billy guy to the point that he shows up with his tough guy brother and another phone hacker in person at the guy's house. The blind guy? The blind guy goes with his brother Who's and another blind. phone hacker. Yeah, but he's a big, tough son right, of a bitch. Right, right. To intimidate this guy, but he's also kind of being like, I don't really want to do this anymore. Just call the investigation off. Because now he's actually intimidated. Right. But the guy from Verizon is like, fuck this. And he calls the cops. Yeah. And Matthew doesn't even resist. He gives it all up right away. Of course. Gives it all up right away. And he stopped being courted as an informant before this because the agent Lind, the agent that he said, oh, you know, went into his apartment and all that. He's like, I, I, I realized he was still fucking with the phone company. He, he's like, I watched, I would monitor his activity. He's like, he couldn't stop hacking for more than 72 hours. He just couldn't do it. And it was an, it was an addiction. Of course. You know, I mean, he was a god. He, right. he, he would find out the phone numbers of fucking celebrities. He gets Lindsay Lohan on the phone. She's drunk. Oh my God. She's trying to get her friend to have phone sex with him. He calls up Eminem. Eminem tells him to fuck off. Shit. <laughs> right. I mean, like, there's, there's, uh, there's got to be recordings there, of this. There was a YouTube video where one of Mitt during the campaign. No, one of Mitt Romney's kids calls his dad, and he hears beep pop boop pop boop pop, and he, he's like, "Oh, I know Mitt Romney's phone number." <laughs> calls Mitt Romney during the campaign, and uh, Mitt Romney picks up and he goes, "Mitt Romney, what's up, dude? Running for president?" <laughs> and Mitt Romney, <laughs> Mitt Romney told him to shove the phone up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, oh my God! From this apartment, this kid wreaked havoc across he, the nation. But he's talking to presidential candidates. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like this this world. This yeah. I mean, it's the first the, the party line community 
the being able to get money. You know, they're they're poor. How was he getting? Oh, because he was because he was credit, all the credit card numbers and stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and then it was like all of the sex shit. I mean, that's his only sexual outlet. Yeah, you know, and he's like he's just a fat kid at home. Yeah, alone in his room, and like it, it's like it reminds me of you. Yeah, you've never seen Equus or Red Equus, the Matt Damon movie. No, no. Oh, Equus. Is that about a horse? It's about this kid. He's crazy. I, I, just there's this whole thing where I'm not a reader, folks. This, Sorry. <laughs> his psychi he, he he does this terrible crime, but he has this whole mythology about horses being gods, and he he would ride horses at night and feel like it was this. Spirit, he would ride horses naked. Naked at night. This was a Harry Potter did a, a play. He did, yeah. He, yeah. he was the he was the kid's role. Yeah. But the the best parts of of the book and movie are are like these monologues. Uh, it was played by Richard Burton in the movie in the seventies. Mm. He's going home after doing all his psychiatry work, and he's fantasizing about old Roman stuff. And he's like, "This kid is living what I'm fantasizing about. He thinks it's real. So like, who am I to take that away from him?" Like, right. he's living these godlike dreams, you right, know? Right. And that's what this kid was doing. Yeah. And it's so, how, how the fuck do you quit that? Oh, I mean, you can't blame the guy. Yeah. He ends up going down for this thing. And he, he was, Rossoff gets nabbed. Mm. And then he implicates the whole wrecking crew. Right. His former mentor and the guy he ended up tormenting, or the guy Matthew Weigman ended up tormenting, Rossoff, he drops the dime on all of them. Mm. <laughs> he's just before the judge being like, yeah, I don't know, I'm just kind of a loser, you know. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I'm kind of a blind, fat loser. No, no, no. Rossoff said this. Oh. <laughs> he was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. It was like a very, very, very weird thing. But anyway, so the ship had sailed on becoming an informant because the FBI's first thing is like, you know how to bypass all of this security. Yeah. With phones. This isn't even the fucking internet. Yeah. You know? It's like an Independence Day when they use Morse code. Right. To subvert the aliens. Yes. This guy is... Like, this is what's so mind-blowing to me about this whole this whole episode, is that I thought that we were going to talk about some 80s shit. No, no. Like, no, no, no. This guy in the 90s, post-9-11, Mitt Romney election, is using the phones to wreak havoc on yes. people. And when he was a child, he, he got this nickname, Lil Hacker. Yep. Right? Lil Hacker. Mm. Isn't that adorable? Isn't it? And then when he had this influence of this Daniels character that was trying... He was... He was trying to get him not to be a bully, not to abuse this power he had. Then he started going by this moniker, Silence. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, it's like weird code names and right, stuff. Right, right, right. And so, basically, he ends up going down for this thing, and he, ad he admits to all of these other crimes, all the swatting and everything. And he gets sentenced to 11 years. As And how old is he at this point? Just turned 18. <sighs> they probably waited. The well, I mean... When the arrest happened, he had just turned 18. When he finally got sentenced and all that shit, I think it was, by then he was 19. Right. But it's 11 years and it's federal prison, and there's there's not really any parole at that level, and there's very little time off for good behavior. Right. So he should be supposedly getting out around 2018. One of the, one of the reporters talked to him said, you know what the worst thing about being in here is? The one privilege I have is the fucking phone! <laughs> This one reporter was like, it's like locking up a crackhead with a pipe and a yeah. fucking endless supply of crack. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's is like, it, is he, the, the is reporter's he like, havoc? no. I mean, he can't. Right. I mean, otherwise, he's, you know, he's he's not allowed to go to the party lines. That's not allowed. Oh, But good. he still has access to a phone. Oh, right, right. You know? And so, like, part of the other stuff he was learning was when you're in kind of different levels of the phone company when you're on a supervisor line. He would be able to hear all those frequencies. Like, they're on different frequencies. So he would... And he called them songs. He's like, I know the different songs. Oh, my gosh. So he, just from ear, learned how to bury deeper and deeper and deeper into the phone company. And like I said, he was like... Now he's saying, like, he's like, I'd really like to work for the phone company. He's like, I could show them how to clean right. this shit show up. Right, right. You know? And, I mean, it seems like he's got his head screwed on straight. He seems remorseful. He's like, I do think my dad fucked me up. <laughs> and that I became a fucking crazy person. Yeah. But... I just don't know how anyone could ever quit an addiction that lasted from the age of 11 to 18. It's all, it's almost all he is. Yes. I mean, he is, I mean, in, in a parallel, you know, he's, he's a fucked up Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Right. Like this is his synthesizer. Yes. And harmonica. And you can't, are you going to take that away from this guy? Or are you going to try and channel this, this energy into something productive? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, the, the. 
the FBI agent was like, he was running circles around me, and I investigate specifically just these guys. He's like, I was flabbergasted by his ability. When they arrested him, they put him in a dark room, and the guy picks up a phone. He already lives in a dark room. He's blind. Right, right. <laughs> they, put him in, they put him in a dark room, and and uh, and they dial this number, and he goes, he goes, what was that? And he recites back the whole number, and he's like, I also know what that is. That's the FBI office here in Boston. So it's like, oh. not only can I recite the number, he also I know the numbers. from memory what, what the fuck, because he was, he was dialing into the voicemails of the U.S. attorney. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, like if he didn't keep pushing it, cause then it was like he lashed, the more and more he knew the investigation was coming down on him cause he has access to all the information. The more he lashed out and the more violent he got and the more he started warning people that would be potential informants against him. So he just got more and more violent and just spiraled out of control until this thing where he shows up at a guy's fucking house. It's like, that's not your world, dude. Stay on the phone. <laughs> yeah, this is the fuck you do. Stick to your wheelhouse, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy from Verizon, he's like, this dude shows up and he's got broken eyes. I'm like, what the fuck do you want? He's like, I'm Matthew. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. What, what happened was that he, he bit off more than he can chew by going into the real world. Yes. So, I mean, basically, I mean, his story, his story is, is just, to me, represents like just reaching these godlike levels. Yeah. And then thinking that you really are. Well, and, I mean, and then going and, and stepping. I mean, I think what did him in was that he got off the phone. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you mentioned a guy that was peripherally like, Mentioned like in some of the stuff I'm reading, a character named Captain Crunch, right? Who was a what era? Like nineteen, like late seventies, eighties era, like original phone freakers. Like the thing about this guy Matthew is that he was just doing all the shit that these guys were doing back then. Yeah, he he. I mean, in a weird way, he's like these fucking hipsters that are like all about listening to only vinyl. Right. Like he was. He's a throwback because. He didn't grow up in that generation. Like, he well, should, plus, what the fuck is he? He should have been a kid doing this, playing Call of Duty, dropping n bombs right. on kids in other states. <laughs> right. Instead, he's touch toning phones. Yeah, like it's it's very quaint. Mm -hmm. uh, these dudes back in the eighties, the original freakers, they some of them were blind and they had perfect pitch, and they realized that when you you could whistle into the phone and mimic the tones, the frequencies. It's a high E, I believe, yeah, like twenty six hundred hertz or something like yeah. that. This is when they went from human operators to computer control right and these guys figured out that you could these, these blind guys with perfect pitch you could just <laughs> right and it would connect them to whatever and they could make free phone calls or run these party lines or whatever and then <laughs> these proto hackers these freakers Back in the 80s, or still do you get toys in, in, in the cereal box yes and there was a whistle that came in a Captain Crunch box right and if you hit like the two of the holes on this little whistle flute, it could perfectly mimic these notes, the, that high E, 2600 hertz, whatever, that the phone company used. And they, they, these guys jumped on it. Right. And they're just hacking lines or making free phone calls. They're calling the Pope. Like, yes. hey, Pope, you there? No, Pope's asleep. It's four in the morning. Do you know who actually did that? Steve Wozniak. Yes. Steve Wozniak of Apple, Apple Computer was one of these freakers. He met... He met with Captain Crunch before Captain Crunch was jailed. Yes. Before he was caught. Oh, yeah. And they realized, they him and Jobs, Jobs is in high school. Yeah. Wozniak's in college. Yep. At Berkeley. And they found out where he lived and invited him to the dorm. Yeah. And this, and this was when the guy was already under investigation, Captain Crunch. So he's yes. like, well, I'll go hang out with these guys in a dorm because there's no way they need to track me there because it's a hundred different you know, units. I'll be fine. So he meets these guys mm -hmm. and they're like, I built this, what they call the blue box. Yes. They, Steve, I'm um, sorry. Um, Steve Wozniak built a blue box, which was basically a, a higher tech version of the captain crunch whistle. Right. And he was like, I don't know how to use it. Show me how to use it. Wow. And he's like, okay. So he shows them how to use it. Wow. And they're just making all these con connections, free phone calls, fraudulent yeah. type of shit. Yeah. And for free. For free, yeah. yeah. And this is big back then because there was nothing else. I mean, they no. there was no home computer. Computers cost a million dollars and they were the size of the studio. Yes. And then what came out was the Altair. Do it yourself. Build your own computer at home. And Wozniak was, I mean, Wozniak's like better than Jobs. Right. Wozniak was the brains behind the tech. Yeah. And he built this computer and then he figured out that you could make images appear on a screen and color and stuff. Right. 
And then that's when they started hacking. Like freaking came before hacking. Yeah. And then all of us, that's when all hell broke loose. Right. Is all these dudes figured out that you could use a computer to manipulate the phone lines, have computers talk to each other. Right. And that's when like the FBI and the FCC was like, oh, we don't, we're outmatched. Wow. We're out, we're outgunned. And yeah. to a degree, they still are. Yeah. No, I think, I think definitely. I think the past election and, and what's going on now, we still realize we're very, we're still at risk. I mean, yeah, it might be worse than ever. Yeah, it's just too unmanageable now. Like, you know, but back then you just had the phone lines. Right. And now you've got cable, satellite, the phone yeah. line. You've got everything. I read I read about the the Wozniak prank to the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> the story was like, yeah, he so he learned all this stuff at, from Captain and they said Captain Crunch shows up and he's He's like, he's missing teeth. Yeah, he's, he's just got a these slob. Scraggly hair. And like, he shows up in the dorm. He does not look like Captain Crunch. No, he, he, is shows, no admiral. he shows up in the dorm like hallway or like, and, and Wozniak is like, are you? And he goes, I am he, Captain yeah, Crunch. I am he. I am he. So Wozniak, yeah, he he's decides on a whim, I'm going to prank the Vatican. I'm going to call the Pope. So he's, uh, he like dials into Italy. Dials into Rome, dials into the Vatican. It's like three step process, right. and then he decides at the last minute. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm Henry Kissinger. Oh, so he tells God. somebody, he's like, I'm Henry Kissinger. I'm trying to reach the Pope, and they're like, well, in that accent without Henry's well, accent. He's like, I started adopting a little bit of a, you know. Yeah. But so he's, they're like, well, it's five thirty a.m. here. Can you call back in an hour? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. Sure. So, so he's like, oh, he's like, I call. So he calls back in an hour. And the that was set up beforehand, they were like, okay, and we're going to have you speak to this bishop who is then going to translate for the Pope, because the Pope is Polish at that point? I don't even know. I think, yeah, it was John Paul, whatever. Two? Was Polish. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, John Paul's the sequel. Yeah. John Paul, John Wick 2. <laughs> so so they, he calls again, and he gets transferred to this bishop, and Wozniak goes, hey, this is Henry Kissinger. And the bishop goes, you're not Henry Kissinger. I just talked to Henry Kissinger. <laughs> Because they like in the meantime they've checked right. So he called the the bishop called Henry Kissinger like, did you just call here? And he's like, no. Right. Oh my god. How bizarre. They could have used this blind kid to set up all sorts of weird <laughs> shit. You know. Yeah. It's crazy. It's people like this Matthew kid, right? Mm -hmm. What else could he have done? Right. What if you direct? What if you, your dad is not beating the shit? But also, maybe your dad beating the shit out of you makes you good at shit. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. I think it's just that, I mean, he already had the skill with, like, the imitation stuff right. and uh, just this insane honed hearing. Right. But then it was just like, we're also, it's so pushed on us to be everything we can. In, and ge I, in I, general. I, yeah, yeah. To be the best people we can. And I think he attained this level that was just insane. Yeah. I mean, how much further could that blind kid in that East Boston apartment have gone into the world? Oh, no. Like, into the world? The into real, the world. The real world? No, I mean, just like, he extended himself through the phone. Yes. He, the phone was a high-tech prosthesis for this guy. Yes. This guy was the lawnmower man. Yeah, he's talking to Mitt Romney. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, Mitt? I, Shove I, it up your ass, blindo! I just think my favorite thing in the world is... Is... <laughs> the, the... 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 The, the lures... For the SWAT team, the lures to 911. I'm tripping on drugs! I got hostages! So you know I'll kill them! And I'm gonna kill any cops that come in here too! Give me 50 grand so I can go to Mexico! And I killed my wife! What the <laughs> fuck? And, now, and also I killed my wife! <laughs> I just threw that in for fun! You see what happens when you don't have phone sex with people, ladies? <laughs> yeah. uh, you, that question that you had of, of, you know, how much further into the- I mean, how- It's a very interesting thought experiment, right? Like. This guy is basically a disembodied consciousness. Yeah. Who extended himself across the world. Yeah. How, I mean, how much further until we're all doing that? How much longer until we're all doing that? He could have been, he was whoever he wanted to be. Right. I'm, today I'm this person. Today I'm that person. And he was doing it on the, on a hundred year old technology. Yeah. I mean, there is, there is a part of you that it's like, what if, it, if, I mean, if he didn't need to act out. I mean, he was always going to need to act out because of his right. his, his but, raising right. and his disability and everything. Like, but what else? Yeah, I mean, done? if he, if he could have taken the deal, become an informant. I mean, could this guy have been like a super spy? I think so. J yeah, but just in an office in Langley. Like, hey, yeah. all right, get the blind kid in here, and then we need you to talk to Putin and convince him. Right. Exactly. That's hey, exactly what this kid could have done. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. Hey, Putin, have phone sex with me. No? All right. SWAT's got the KGB's kicking down your door. Because, I mean, don't forget, he's. it's not as if he's got somebody there to help. He's figuring everything out through his hearing. On his own. Like if, if And he can't take notes. If he, if he, he can't write. Yeah. There's no notes taking. There's no reading. There's no looking up on the internet. There is nothing this guy is doing but just for... This guy is 100% willpower. Mm-hmm. And he's so good that the other aspiring freakers were like, we want to learn everything from you. So he had a team. He had what they call... The, rec- s- the Wrecking Crew. Well, no, the Wrecking Crew... The re- some of the some of them were the wrecking crew, but any of like the up and comers too. He he called them. He he knew you could do some little task that he could do in his spare time if you wanted to. But he outsourced it. But he would out, he would have fucking teamwork. Good leaders he called delegate. them stoolies. Oh my god! And he would just have them doing all kinds of shit, so that if you really needed to to attack one person and find a ton of shit on them, a ton of information, they'd be like, "All right, guys, I need you to lock in on this. You take this. You take that." You- and then they would all bring all the information back to him. This is old school human intel. Yeah. Like everything he was getting, there it, it was again to bring it up. There's not, nothing written, no dossiers. He was getting this by pretending to be somebody and getting somebody else, a human, to tell it to him. Not only that, he's doing accents. He's he's changing. You know, I mean, the character of his voice. Right. He's making the small age. talk that you would make to impersonate you on the phone. He's doing all that shit. I mean, he's he's talking about getting... He's like, I need you to shut off this line. You know, it's uh, it, just somebody who said something mean to him. He's shutting off a line. And he's talking to somebody at the phone company. And uh, he's saying, yeah, that's a fraudulent account. And he's like, that guy is, a, you know, he's one of these phone hackers. And he's like, I don't know how these guys don't think they're going to get caught, you know? And like making all this small talk right, right. about phone crime. Yeah, this guy's a little blind fat kid. His dad beats the shit out of him. Shut up his phone. <laughs> yeah. A little sad, sad fuck. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I that's think- a trip. It's a, that it, This is just as somebody who's cited, as are you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> And man, boy, are you! Oh yeah, especially with after the LASIK and what. No, oh, forget That's great. it. Great, could see it all. Oh, your vision is. I can't imagine. I mean, this guy just shut off a, a, a sense, and then this guy's just operating on another level in this one medium. Yeah, I mean, the most touching thing to me about it is when he goes into that first party line and says, "We're all blind in here right now." Oof. But then, because he is blind. We're not all blind in here right now. Uh, You're all beneath me. In, the, in what is it? In the kingdom <laughs> of the blind, the one-eyed man is king? Yes. In the kingdom of the party line, the blind man is king. Yeah. And that'll but I mean, like, it's like... Because he's been here before. Yeah. and But, like, there's other there are other things that you have to remember. Like, just by talking to people all day, he is getting this bizarre version of what he thinks the world is. You know oh, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and it's not right. It's weirdos, but then there's like some like this like this good natured character like Daniels comes along. He's trying to show him good things, and right. he responded well to that, but not well enough. Right. You know, like Daniels had to cut Matthew off because he's like, dude, I know you're still you're still bullying people. You're, you're still sending guys in bulletproof vests through people's windows. You know, I mean, you, you're gonna have to go. So he just kind of like let him go, but you know, it was like amicable. You know. But yeah, it's a really, I mean, this blind kid going to prison, and this is part of the thing, too, is that he thought he would have so much sympathy, he would never go to prison. He went to prison for 11 fucking years. But would he know it? I know. I, know. <laughs> I mean, he's blind. He's in, he's in another room. He's in another world in this phone group. Like, yeah. And a, they still gave him the phone. And, yeah. They still, so, I mean, was he really in prison? Yeah. He, he was already in a prison before that. He's that, just in yeah, a different that, prison. That is true. And now he's going to get out and they'll option the life to his move, the rights to his life. Yeah, and this reporter that interviews him in prison, he's like, he's like, every tap, every click, everything going on in the background, he's like, I could see his face twitch. Like, he, he would have physical yeah. reactions to the slightest yeah. of sounds. This guy's a superhero, man. Yes. Evil, you know, evil genius superhero M. Night Shyamalan's going to make a movie. I was very excited to tell you about this character. I'm very excited to hear about it. I'm Matthew still jazzed. Weigman. It's not really uh, something... You can find in a book format. I don't have a list not of... Yet, not yet, But, I mean, yeah. If, I mean, you can find the articles. There's some that go really deep. They get the... I mean, they find all the Wrecking Crew. They talk to those guys. They talk to the girls. That wouldn't phone fuck uh, I mean, <laughs> Matthew would talk about... He, he would call them phone groupies. Oh, my God. You know? And, like, they were... But... Uh, what a bizarre world. 
especially in the age of the internet. Yeah. Who are these people that are like, no, not internet, visual media, not for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sit on this handset. Yeah. Who are these people still doing that? I, I, that aren't blind. I don't know. I mean, this might have to be a two-part episode because, like, <laughs> we might have to come back and, and, and revisit this and find out more about these. Maybe we can get them on the phone. You think? <laughs> <laughs> we should call him. We should get him on the phone. We should get him on the phone. He's in Fort Dix. He is? Yeah, the fucking like, yeah. The federal prison yeah, in Fort yeah, Dix. Yeah, yeah, not, not what you call your bedroom. <laughs> Thanks. Great. <laughs> Fort Dix. Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, so yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a list of. Uh, but look I, up Matthew Weigman, and if you Matthew want to look Weigman, up more stuff, you can look up the original guys. You can look Captain up Steve Crunch. Wozniak, Captain Crunch. I mean, what blew it up for these guys was that Esquire wrote an article on them, and that's when it blew the lid off the whole thing back. In what the they weren't caught, and Esquire wrote an article? No, exactly. Esquire interviewed all these guys and wrote an article. Like I, I forget the name of the article, but Jesus. it was like phone hackers or the freakers or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these guys were like, fuck. Well, the shit. <laughs> the, our cover's blown. And that's when, you know, eventually some of them did go to jail and yeah. Wozniak became, you know, Wozniak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some of them went to jail, some of them became billionaires. And so, and, and, well, and then he appeared on Dancing on the, with the Stars. I didn't know that. He did. Oh, Steve Wozniak? Yeah. Jesus. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a ham. Really? Steve Wozniak is a ham. Like, the complete opposite of Steve Jobs. Yeah. He's this fat jovial bushy hair guy and just like very fey yeah but he could he could have been more could not have been more different than jobs i cannot wait to see what happens to matthew weigman when he gets out of jail uh well i don't i can't i bet he can't wait to see anything <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, i mean really what, he gets what out, is this kid gonna, gonna do, do? There, he's gonna get hired by a phone company or the fbi or the fcc yeah and yeah, put this guy to work. I mean, the hit, when he said, well, he's like, I could tighten up all of this shit yeah. for Verizon. Yeah. It's like, and believe, Verizon could use it. You know what I mean? Like, do it. Like, why wouldn't, why would you not do that? Yeah. This guy should be like the highest paid security consultant for any phone company. Yeah. You for know? all of them. Yes. Somebody, if you're out there listening. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so we might have to follow up on Matthew to see where Matthew ends up. And yeah. maybe we could get him on the fucking phone. I bet we could. We, oh, man. What Give him we... a jangle on the old phone machine? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be very nice. <laughs> for him. Uh, I want to thank Kevin Anderson and Matthew Brousseau. I'd like for, to thank them as well. Yes, letting us have this wonderful studio oh, and record here. Such sweet Starburns. Oh. And uh, doing a little promo on the Bleak and Review, which is very sweet. Yes. I mean, it in increased our listener count. Uh, it, God. God knows. Tenfold. Yes. I want to thank you, John. Oh, I want to thank you too, my uh, co-host Aaron Pita. Uh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to get you know very. We're gonna jazzed. get deep into some fucking weirdos, pal. So uh, buckle up. Get ready, listeners. You like magic? You like <laughs> sex magic? You like rocketry? Mm. You like war heroes mm. defying the odds? Yeah. You like that kind of stuff? Love it. Well, stay tuned. And Matthew Weigman, if you're listening, which I know you are. <laughs> Because you're going to need stuff to listen to while you're serving out the rest of your sentence. We oh, should, yeah. We should call this guy up and be like, hey, you got 18 months left. Yeah. What if he doesn't like it, though? Then he's going to send the fucking police swat up. <laughs> well, listen, I'll have phone sex with him. I'll do it. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a great idea. I'm really good at it. All right. Uh, stay tuned, uh, folks. We got a lot of weird shit coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. 